These this afternoon's top stories. Minister Hamilton weighs in on the Speaker's rejection of motion of no confidence. Nurses in Trinidad say they are being mistreated and Barood bomb attack suspect caught. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Monday, January 23rd, 2017. I am Shaira Flanders. Nationally, Leader of Government Business in the House of Assembly, Honorable Eugene Hamilton, says he supports Speaker of the House, Honorable Michael Perkins' decision to dismiss the opposition's motion of no confidence filed on Friday. He made the statement during a recent interview with Director General of SKNIS, Les Roy Williams. I think the Speaker was absolutely right. Yes. The motion was out of order. And the motion had no right to reach the parliament in the state it was in. And I think the, the speaker conducted himself properly by giving a ruling and actually pointing to the various sections which it violates. And none of them can dispute that. Mm -hmm. None of them can dispute that. On Friday morning, the speaker responded to claims that he gave preference to certain speakers and tried to block specific members of parliament from speaking. During his ruling on the motion, Speaker Perkins was interrupted by members of the opposition and eventually asked opposition leader, Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, to leave the House of Assembly. Dr. Douglas responded that he was already on the way out. Other members of the opposition left with Dr. Douglas. After the opposition's departure, the Speaker ruled that the motion brought by Douglas, questioning the impartiality of the Speaker, is, quote, out of order and is closed. The Ocean Terrace Inn has adopted Irishtown Primary School in attempts to enhance the school's physical environment. In officially endorsing the initiative, the OTI team and Ministry of Education officials attended a ceremony at the school on Monday. General Manager of Ocean Terrace Inn, Christopher Gita, said OTI is pleased to be able to partner with the Irishtown Primary School. We are delighted to be participating or partnering with the Irishtown Primary School its students, faculty, and by extension, the community. Rest assured, we are not only going to be the cylinder for instituting environmental best practices at the school, but we are also going to be your partner in maintaining the very practices that are extremely important for preserving, protecting, and promoting our environment. He further spoke of the plans that are expected to be carried out during the partnership. The presentation of those garbage receptacles is the first step in our commitment to you. We also pledge to conduct on and off-site knowledge sessions for exposing you to more of what the hotel does and your role in the preservation of the industry as well. Our plans are going to include the integration of the faculty members on planned programs and initiatives that will see us work closer together. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, William Vincent Hodge, commended the Ocean Terrace Inn for taking the initiative. Ocean Terrace Inn is one of the leaders in private-public partnership in the country. And so we want to extend our deepest appreciation for the work that they do, not just as an institution within the hospitality industry, but especially in terms of their partnership in education. So I want to thank OTI for bringing this on board specifically as it relates to Irish Town Primary. The ceremony also included the handing over of garbage receptacles to the school. The OTI slash Irish Town Primary School partnership will be based on environmental sustainable best practices, which will include sanitation best practices, eating habits, and classroom and community monitoring. The Rotary Club of St. Kitts and the Rotary Club of La Amiga are set to host the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards or RILA conference from February 3rd to the 5th, 2017. This prestigious event is scheduled to take place at the Bird Rock Beach Hotel in St. Kitts with various activities throughout both islands of St. Kitts and Nevis under the theme Connect, Engage, Change. RILA is an intensive training program that brings together youth and young adults ages 14 to 30 to further develop character 
character and leadership skills while exposing them to Rotary's values of service, high ethical standards and peace. This year's conference will offer the opportunity to build self-confidence, gain exposure to a variety of issues and people, meet active community leaders and learn valuable information and career skills for over 100 young people from 17 countries across Rotary District 7030. Moving on to news on the regional scene in Trinidad, nurses attached to the Northern Central Regional Health Authority are not happy with the treatment meted out to them. They say they are not given time off to pursue their courses to be qualified as midwives. Ian Wason has the details on that story. Registered nurses employed with the North Central Regional Health Authority are not being allowed to take paid leave to complete a 15-month midwifery course run by Custard. They are concerned they are forced to work and pursue the course part-time after all applications for paid leave from the NCRHA were denied despite correspondence from Custard of their acceptance. They claim persons who are pursuing a similar course under the Ministry of Health are able to get paid leave to pursue the course. The nurses say they have agreed to funding their own tuition which isn't gate approved at the cost of $25,000. They say in December they were called by Costat to collect their acceptance letters asking the nurses to write to the regional health authorities about getting paid leave. The nurses also stated the North Central Regional Health Authority said that an employee cannot do a full-time program and work at the same time because of shortage of staff. However, they claim nurses from other regional health authorities are able to get paid leave. The nurses add they would like the time off to complete the Custal program just as the nurses completing the midwifery program with the Ministry of Health. The nurses, speaking to C News under the condition of anonymity, said some of the nurses have made up their minds to juggle both work and completing the course, while others are forced to forego the course altogether. Calls to the CEO of the NCRHA, Davin Thomas, went unanswered. Ian Wason for C News. Still in Trinidad, a child marriage will likely soon be illegal. The Miscellaneous Provisions Marriage Bill, which Trinidad and Tobago's Attorney General presented in the country's Senate nearly 10 days ago, has passed. All that remains as the bill proceeds to the House of Representatives is the support of a simple majority to make it into law. However, Sat Maraj, the Secretary General of the country's most high-profile Hindu organization, has threatened legal action should the amendments to the Marriage Act be passed. The position of the Hindu Women's Organization of Trinidad and Tobago on this issue is at loggerheads with the stance of some religious leaders. The group reiterated its call for the age of 18 to be established as the legal age of consent to marry with provisions for 16 to 18 year olds under strict checks and balances. The bill is widely expected to pass in the lower house of parliament. Moving on to news on the international scene, Lebanese security forces are questioning a man they say was about to carry out a suicide bomb attack at a busy cafe in the capital, Beirut. The suspect who was arrested at the scene has been identified as Omar Hassan, a Lebanese national from the southern city of Saida. We hear more in this report. It's business as usual at this coffee shop in the busy Hamra district of Beirut. Hours earlier, it was the scene of a major security operation when Lebanese forces apprehended a suspected suicide bomber. They say he was about to detonate a bomb packed with around 8 kilograms of explosives strapped to his waist. Musa Surur was in the cafe along with about 50 others. We saw the attempted bomber come in and order a coffee. He started talking to a girl in the cafe and then bought a chocolate and went outside to make a call. After he came back inside, four men suddenly grabbed him and a fifth man hit him in the back of the head with a gun. Then one of them screamed he was wearing an explosive belt. We all panicked and went to the downstairs seating area and we weren't allowed to leave until they told us we could. There have been a number of bombings across Lebanon in recent years, including some that are motivated by the war in Syria. But there hasn't been a major incident in many months, and never has an attack taken in this area of the city, which is why people are asking, why here and why now? 
questions investigators are still trying to answer. The home of the suspect, Omar Hassan, has been searched by police and family members questioned. He shares the apartment with his mother and four brothers. Lebanese security chiefs are suggesting Hassan is linked to ISIL. Mahmoud Abdelaziz is one of his neighbors. I was shocked to hear the news because I know the boy and he is decent. I saw him at the mosque a few months ago and he told me that he was enrolled in one of the universities and he was going to continue his studies. I don't know what happened or how this happened. It's so strange. I'm shocked. Security has been tightened in some areas as investigators continue their search. In the meantime, much of the city, including this cafe, has returned to normal. In the time, Al Jazeera, Beirut. A new set of talks aimed at ending the Syrian conflict is set to kick off in Kazakhstan's capital on Monday. Diplomatic efforts to solve the crisis have repeatedly failed over the past six years. Turkey, which has restored relations with Russia and ensured the forced evacuation of opposition groups and residents from Aleppo, is seen as the biggest game changer. Here's more. Almost six years of war in Syria have killed hundreds of thousands of people and turned millions into homeless refugees. What started off as a peaceful protest movement by Syrians demanding freedom soon turned into a civil war with regional governments and international powers trying to further their own interests by backing opposing sides. Numerous attempts, primarily led by the United Nations, to end the fighting have failed. And the Syrian regime and its army, responsible for much of the killing, is in the strongest position it's been in since the war began. That's primarily due to its allies. Russian airstrikes on rebel-held territories tip the balance in favor of Bashar al-Assad's government. On the ground, thousands of Shia militia sent and armed by Iran helped consolidate Assad's grip on power. The fall of Aleppo was testament to this. On the other side, Gulf countries which once armed and funded rebel groups have significantly reduced their support, unable to agree on what a post-Assad Syria could or would look like. While Turkey, which continues to host more than 2 million Syrian refugees, is being seen as the biggest game-changer. Turkish leaders had insisted that they would never allow for Aleppo to fall and that Assad must leave for peace to be achieved, but that has all changed now. Turkey is now working closely with Russia. The two countries cooperated to ensure the forced evacuation of opposition groups and residents from Aleppo. Now they've organized ceasefire talks in Kazakhstan. Some analysts say the change in Turkey-Russia relations could bring about an end to the war. Uh, both uh, countries actually uh, would be uh, uh, important uh, uh, actors in bringing the opposition on table as well as convincing the regime uh, for accepting a, a peaceful uh, solution in, um, if, if for, for Syria. And that will hopefully will be achieved partly. I'm not assuming uh, to have 100 percent, but a major part will be achieved in the Astana meetings. World leaders have often said that it is up to the Syrian people to decide their own future. But the truth is that it is regional and international powers who have allowed for this war to continue, and it is them who have the ability to bring it to an end. As these talks take place here in Astana, millions of Syrians who continue to suffer will be hoping that this time round, their lives will be as important as political interests, if not more. Jamal al Shayyal, Al Jazeera, Astana, Kazakhstan. And now for the weather. Current conditions are fair skies with calm winds. Seas are slight to moderate with waves of 3 to 5 feet. Today will be sunny to partly cloudy with the chance of light and localized showers this afternoon. Tonight will be fair with a low chance of showers. That brings us to the end of the ZRIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Shaira Flanders. Have a good one.